Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another monthly reading wrap up. So this is for the month of, will be in August, August 2021. Dane reads. Uh, the first book that I have for you is Foundation and Earth by Isaac Asimov and unfortunately it's bad news because I gave this one a 3 out of 5. I've just not really enjoyed the Foundation series. Uh, this is like the fifth book I think right now and like one or two of them were okay. Like I think I said in my vlog recently, like they've been mediocre at best. Which is a real shame because I'm a big Asimov fan and this is like his best known series but it's just not been for me really. But hey ho, 3 out of 5 for Foundation and Earth. Probably wouldn't recommend it. If you're new to Asimov, read something like iRobot or any of his robot stories really. Even some of his mysteries or the lucky Starbucks before you get to Foundation. Um, yeah. Alright guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, a children's classic. I think this book actually belonged to my ex-girlfriend's brother because his name's written to the front of it. It could just be a coincidence. But I vaguely remember, I think um, I rescued it from some books she was going to donate to a charity shop. I've previously read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and enjoyed that. I enjoyed this too. There's a lot of N-bombs in this, but from what I understand, Mark Twain was actually pretty woke for his day. Um, and there are certainly like a lot of black characters in this who are quite multi-dimensional, although there is a lot of like stereotyping and stuff as well. I mean a lot of it in a way you can't help it because it's set like just after the abolition of slavery I think. Um, but yeah, children's classics. I would possibly say don't give it to a child, give it like a teenager. If you're a teenager I think you'd be alright. Um, but if you're particularly young, you need to be old enough to understand what racism is and to be able to draw your own conclusions about what is and what isn't racist. Um, based on, again, I'm not saying Twain was a racist, I just think the time it was written, it was a racist time, you know. But uh, 3.5 out of 5, I am enjoying it, I'm glad that I'll have tipped it off. And um, yeah. Then I read Robots and Empire by Isaac Asimov. Didn't much enjoy this to be honest, I mean, I've just not really enjoyed the Empire or the Foundation books that much. I do like Asimov's robot stuff, but this one... I don't know, because it was a novel rather than short stories, he didn't get to investigate as many concepts and it's really those concepts and like the morality and the ways that the laws of robotics can be broken which make these books so interesting to me in the first place. So overall I gave it like, I would say a strong 3 out of 5. Then I read Lost at Sea by John Ronson, the John Ronson mysteries and um, John Ronson is a journalist, he's famously wrote a book called The Psychopath Test. Uh, this is basically a collection of different like articles that he wrote where he investigated different things from like competitive eating to crime fighting to people who donate their um, um, what is it their kidneys one of their kidneys to strangers and um, yeah because of that because it was sort of split up into chapters all covering different things I found it probably more interesting than something like the psychopath test where it was just one subject all the way through uh, what I will say is that there were some of them that I was kind of bored with and that went on for too long and then others didn't go on for long enough and there was also one of them that I feel like I'd read before somewhere and I can't remember where but uh, overall 4 out of 5 definitely recommended full review of this and Asimov coming soon if it's not out already uh, and now I'm currently reading Corrings by Stephen Colgan but I've only just started it so I, I'm not at liberty to review it yet Salut tout le monde, j'ai lu uh, Le Combat des Chefs par Argosinie et Adesso c'est un bon dessinat um novel graphic, <laughs> un roman graphic, uh, a graphic novel en anglais. Uh, oui, c'est uh, très bien, uh, j'ai beaucoup aimé ce livre. Uh, c'est le huitième roman sur la série et uh, oui, uh, portez-moi tous les livres d'Asterix. Uh, je l'ai aimé. Jalemi. Yeah, I like them. This one, uh, Edifix Druid, he forgets everything basically. Uh, il a oublié uh, sa mémoire, he, he lost his memory, and um, yeah, then there's a big old fight and there's no one around to breathe a magic potion. So that's what happens in this one. Solid 4 out of 5, did enjoy. And I also read Corrings by Stephen Colgan. So this was a solid 4 out of 5. Black comedy, but very humorous. Uh, there's a lot of like. So sexual humour in this as well. It's almost like American Pie. It's like a very British American Pie, um, set in this like fictional British um, um, county called uh, South Herefordshire. And uh, yeah, it's the third in the series. And um, really enjoying these. Uh, I know him in real life as well. He actually delivered one of the writing workshops I organised for Wickham Arts Centre. 
uh, and I'm I pledge to support this through Unbound the publisher as well so full review coming soon anyway hello everybody just a few books to update you on here the first is Aodetsu and Argosini Asterix a Cleopatra um, I think I've already reviewed an Asterix book as part of my wrap up this month but basically I missed out Asterix and Cleopatra which I read earlier this month it was a lot of fun uh, probably a 4.5 out of 5 uh, I love ancient Egypt so it was just fun to see the French take on ancient Egypt via Asterix you know then I read Corings by Stephen Colgan, so this is like a black comedy set in an English village. Uh, third book in a series. I actually pledged to support this one through Unbound, the publisher, because uh, I'm, you know, well I know Stephen Colgan in real life, but also I'm a big fan of his work. And this one did not disappoint. Uh, risque at times. Uh, hilarious romp, I would categorise it as. Four out of five, review coming soon. Then I read Man of Letters by Spike Milligan. This is literally one of his collections of letters. Um, i have been putting this off and had it as a bedtime book, but actually it was quickly enough to like whiz through some interesting stuff, like he suffered from bipolar disorder, and he had a few letters from people who also suffered from bipolar disorder, and he was like happy to share his advice and his insight and stuff. Lots of stuff about animal conservation in here as well, but I mean, he was a complicated man, and he wasn't always a nice man, so, you know, 3.5 out of 5, take it for what it is. And then I read Extraterrestrial Civilizations by Isaac Asimov. This is another 3.5 out of 5. Non-fiction from Asimov, the master of sci-fi. He was also a very like, accomplished scientist, knew his stuff. And in this one basically he goes over the theories behind whether there's uh, any form of life out there in the universe. He comes to the conclusion that there is, but also that we're unlikely to ever really meet it. And he talked about why. And um, yeah, just an interesting little book if, if that kind of thing floats your boat and uh, soggies your biscuit. So go ahead and check it. Hello, just two books to wrap up for you today. The first is For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. Uh, this is basically about the Spanish Civil War. Uh, I think it's based on Hemingway's own experiences in it. It basically revolves around this like plan to blow up a bridge. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, um, partly because I don't want to spoil the plot, but also it's very complicated. Um, and uh, yeah, there's also a love story going on in the background as well. I think it's very Hemingway to be able to get like the evils of war and the beauty of love like coexisting side by side. Very beautifully written. Uh, overall, pretty strong. Now we'll go for a week four out of five. Uh, and yeah, did enjoy it. And then I read 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari. Uh, this is a book that's been on my TBR pile for a while now. Um, one of my clients actually got me this copy because uh, there's a lot of stuff in here about like the future of healthcare, which me and this client uh, do a lot of work on. Um, but yeah, this is basically, it's got a bunch of like technology stuff in it. It's got some like societal stuff, talks about immigration, this and that. I don't know about 21 Lessons because they're not really lessons, it's more that they're just like 21 different subject matters that he wanted to write about and he sort of shares his musings on them. Um, but I don't know, it kind of, it read almost like a dialogue, so he's just kind of suggesting a few things and it's up to you as the reader to decide what you want to take away and what you don't want to take away. Overall, uh, pretty strong 3.5 out of 5 for this and a full review coming soon. Hello, okay, I've got three books to wrap up for you today. The first is Fantastic Voyage by Isaac Asimov. This is a novelization of a film that I think came out in the 60s. Presumably quite iconic because the plot of this is kind of a cliche by this point. Basically a bunch of people in like a ship get shrunk down and injected into someone's bloodstream to go to try and travel to his brain to fix the blood clot. Um, yeah, there's almost like a whodunit behind it as well. Lots of biology. I don't know how much you can credit to Asimov and how much is like from the film. But overall, did enjoy. Four out of five. Full review coming soon. Then we have Asterix chez les Bretons par Argosini et Aderzo. C'est une bande dessinée en français. Uh, that means it's a graphic novel. It's about number eight or number nine in the series. You know I've done a lot of these by this point. In this one they uh, travelled to Britain, so that was kind of cool. They played like Gaelic football. I mean, it was kind of rugby, kind of Gaelic football. A mixture of the two, I guess. And uh, yeah, very enjoyable. 3.5 out of 5. And then I read Keeping On, Keeping On by Alan Bennett. So this is a collection first of his like journals and then a few essays as well. Pretty dull to be honest. I read most of it as a bedtime book and then switched it over to a daytime book just when I was near the end just to finish it off, you know. And there was some cool stuff because like it was a fairly recent journal so there was a lot of his thoughts about like political events that I remember from the 7-7 bombings to the Brexit vote and stuff like that. But uh, overall, just, just a bit hard work really. I gave it a 3 out of 5 though. I can't see why you would read it unless you were a big Alan Bennett fan. 
Hello everybody, just a quick book to wrap up for you today. This is Blackwater Town by Paul Waters. This is set in the 1960s, uh, it's set in Ireland during the Troubles, you know, um, basically the, the IRA blowing things up and stuff. Uh, we follow a policeman called Macken. Uh, he falls in love with this lass called Aoife, like Aoife from Fred Weezy died laughing. Uh, very grounded in the time it was set, uh, very well researched I thought. Maybe a little bit on the long side, but having said that it was still good enough to keep me interested. Lots of twists and turns, it's kind of like a thriller slash crime procedural novel. Um, yeah, I just re I thought it was really well written, uh, so I gave this a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5, not quite a 4 out of 5. Um, but if you're like participating in say the Irish readathon, check it out. Full review coming soon as well. All right, so apparently I forgot to wrap up a couple of books. So the first one is Ringworld by Larry Niven. Uh, this is classic sci-fi, and I can't remember the term for it now. Um, but there is some science around it. Wasn't it a Dyson sphere? The idea of a Dyson sphere is this big structure you build around a sun, and it basically absorbs all of the light, and it would make like basically. For, for human purposes, limitless amounts of energy. Um, and Ringworld is kind of an extension of that. It's basically a ring built around, is it built around a planet or built around a sun? I can't remember. I think it is built around a sun. Um, and it's basically like a kilometer wide and then just like fucking millions of kilometers long or whatever. So you can get like billions and billions and billions of people on it. So that's kind of the concept. Um, the storyline, I think, took a bit of a second seat to the concept, which actually happens quite often in sci-fi, especially in classic sci-fi. Like, it gets, the author gets too taken by the science of it and forgets about the story, and I definitely think that happened here. However, it was still enjoyable enough. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was my first Larry Niven. I wouldn't say I'd never read Larry Niven again, but I also won't be going out my way to read more. I think it's also the first book in like a cycle as well, so, you know, maybe I'll read the next Ringworld book at some point. So that was 3.5 out of 5, and then the other one was On a Distant Ridgeline by Sam Reese. So this was a collection of short stories, I would call them like literary fiction short stories. The collection itself had a kind of theme throughout it as well, so all of the stories felt kind of interconnected. I think it's a great example of what we're missing because of the publishing industry today. So, basically, publishing today is very much about like you've got a you're going to publish the books that you know are going to sell well, and short story collections generally don't sell well, especially when they're not by like a well-known author. And so, um, I think that's a shame because stuff like this on a distant ridge line is a great example of like really good short stories, really thought-provoking stuff, like a really fresh take on the genre as well. Um, and I would just infinitely prefer to have more of those and less generic YA fantasy, you know, but that's just myself and obviously the market doesn't agree with me because if it did, they'd be publishing more, <laughs> more short story collections and less YA fantasy, so I, I guess I'm in the minority there, but uh, yeah, on a distant ridge line, Sam Reese, strong 4 out of 5, almost a 4.5, but not quite, but very good. Alright everybody, one last book to talk about and that is God Emperor of Dune by Frank Herbert. So uh, this is book number four in the Dune series. By this point, none of the original uh, cast of characters is still around, although there is a Duncan Idaho. It's just a, cl a clone of Duncan Idaho. Uh, Leto, Paul Mwadib's son, uh, Leto II is knocking around, except he's basically turned into a sandworm. And that tells you about how crazy this book is. Um, actually, I really enjoyed it. I feel like the Dune series just keeps getting better and better. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the second book, Dune Messiah, but I actually quite enjoyed that one as well. I feel like the first book was about 200 pages too long. It had a lot of time in the desert where basically nothing really happened. But by the time we get to this point, actually a lot is happening. All of the world building's done, so it can just kind of keep going on from there. So uh, I gave this a strong 4 out of 5, did enjoy, and I will be reading whatever the hell comes next. Does it say anywhere? Heretics of June, I imagine. So uh, yes, I'll be reading that soon. And that brings us to the end of another monthly reading wrap-up. So uh, I'm, now, I'm now on 24 books owned and unread. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm still trying to get that down. Like to get it down below 10 ideally. Part of the challenge and why I've been reading the Dune books is that I have two of the um, Brian Herbert Dune books, which he kind of continued after his father died. And I've heard they're not very good. But, uh, but having said that, obviously I'm finding that the series ju is just getting better and better. So um, I'm gonna keep persevering and see if, see if I can get through to those books so that then I can read those and tick them off my list, you know? 
Um, but I have plenty of other books to be reading as well, so I should at the very least be able to get under 20. Whether I get under 10 is a different matter, because in the end they're just going to all be bedtime books, you know? But we're there, so as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.